Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you, and uh, we're glad to be back. We were here probably a couple of years ago. I look exactly the same, right? <laughs> Amen? And uh, my wife, Jenny, is here. She looks exactly the same. She's right here. And our friends, Linda and Keith Davis, are here. And uh, we welcome them and everyone. It's nice to be here and to worship with you. And Catherine did a great job on the scripture. Amen? Okay, I love it. That is so wonderful. And, uh, you know, good parenting. And in fact, I'm going to close with a story about young people. So what I'm saying is uh, for all of us, including the young folks here, and um, so off, all, uh, every time I preach, um, the Lord put it on my heart to have a call. And uh, I'm going to have a call today. And the call is, this is exactly what the call is, is, do um, you notice in the, the title of the, the sermon, by the way? The title of the sermon is, is to make Jesus your highest priority. That's the call. So at the conclusion of this sermon, I'm going to have a call to come forward, and Lee Ruggles can play that call music for me. <laughs> come on now, you know what I'm talking about. To come down here, and then... What you're down here for is I'm going to lead a prayer and I'm going to pray for all of us and your reason for coming forward is saying, Lord, I want to make you my highest priority in life. Not just today, but I'm going to make you my highest priority every single day. Okay, so see what the call is? Don't come up yet. Don't come up till I'm done. And um, um, also, one other thing, if there's anyone in here who has not received Jesus as their Savior, you come up too. And come up, stand right by me, all right? Because we want to make sure that you're a part of that call. And we can help you find Jesus and make him your life. Okay, now, we all have lots to worry about, amen? Got the fire going, we're worried about pastor, you know, and his family. There's a lot of things to worry about. Um, the American Psychological Association did a poll not long ago, and they asked the question, what are you worrying about? What do you think is the number one worry? Who said money? Amen. <laughs> money and finances, number one. What was number two? Okay, well, it was coming up, family's coming up. Number two, number two was work and jobs. You know, working jobs, that kind of thing, wondering what's going to happen to that. Number three was relationships, you know, husband, wife, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, things like that. So money, work, relationships. And that's the kind of thing that the American Psychological Association found. But the question today is, what are you worried about? What are you thinking about? What kind of upsets your stomach a little bit? You know? What, what are you worrying about? Okay. It's, a, it's a big question. And, and think about it, folks, because that's what the whole message is about. Jesus himself told us what the most important things people worried about in the first century. Jesus told us. The three most important things that people worried about in the first century, and think about this now, and you'll know what, what this is. It's in our scripture the first thing they worried about was food. Do we have enough to eat? Second thing they worried about was drink. Water was horrible in those days. So they would take cheap wine and mix the water and the wine together. And that's what they would drink. It wasn't very good. The third, things, third thing was clothing. They did not have closets. They had maybe one thing, you know. And you, as you read your Bible, you re read about people who are dressed in scarlet robes and things like this. They worried about basic things, food, water, clothing. Here's the deal. Whether we're talking about the first century or we're talking about the 21st century, the solution for worry is all the same. It's all the same. When the Lord says to stop worrying... He means that he can offer himself as a solution. Amen. Now, that may not surprise you, but I think it will be as we, as we unpack it a little bit. 
Jesus says, stop worrying. He offers himself as your solution and my solution. Now, when he says, don't worry about food, and don't worry about, don't worry about, he is not saying to anybody, hey, don't go to work, you know, just hang out, get in that recliner, you know, take a couple of Z's. He's not saying that at all. Because part of God's plan for the human family is to work. Amen? Amen. I mean, that's part of his plan. See, the, the things that the Lord talks about, food, drink, and clothing, are material needs. One reason not to worry about it is because he already knows what you need. Now, if he already knows what your material needs are, he also knows what your needs are. Your spiritual needs, your emotional needs, your relational needs, he knows. He's God. Is anything beyond God? I don't think so. So now with your, oh, did I invite you to open up your Bibles? Please open up your Bibles to chapter 6, Mark chapter 6. We're going to look at verse um, 33, but I want you to see it in your Bible. So I'm not going to read it until you get there. Or use the Pew Bible. So you know this very well, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. You all know this one. Go ahead and open it up before I read it. Because this is a key, this is the key text right here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it's already been read, you know, in verse 31. You know, you know say, it says, so don't worry, saying, by the way, do you have red letter or version of the Bible? That means Jesus is saying it to us. So don't worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Now here's our scripture. Got your Bibles ready? Yeah. Verse 33, we're going to read it together. I have the NIV version. Whatever version you have, you read it too. Don't worry about it. This has to be in unison. Read it with me. We're going to read it out loud, okay? Here we go. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Wow. Okay. Now let me just say that again. Let me just say it again. But seek first. The very first thing to seek is what? The kingdom of God. Hmm. It says the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given unto you. Wow. Well, when you think about it, the kingdom, when you think about this scripture, what it's talking about is when you seek first the kingdom, you are seeking, it's like, okay, where's it at? A kingdom. You think of a kingdom. By the way, um, everything follows God's will in heaven and on earth. Is that true? There is nothing that's beyond God's will. Surprises God. He didn't know about it. If it happened, God already knew. That's the Seventh-day Adventist position. That's our theological position. That means when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is where? Yes. In heaven. Just like in heaven, his will is done so it is on earth that his will is done. Okay, so we want to make that really clear. Nothing escapes God. Nothing. Amen. Your needs never escape the Lord. The only thing is, sometimes we're a little impatient. Lord, I want it right now. You've got to fix this right now, God. You know? You've got to change it, Lord. But you know what? We want to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In my life, as in the lives of God's people. See, see what I mean? So how's the sermon so far? Is it okay? Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. So, when you say, Jesus, I want to make you my highest priority, 
What you're saying is, I want the Lord to be my biggest need. See? Now, see, the people in the first century, their biggest need was food, drink, and clothing. So they were praying, Lord, we need food. Lord, we need drink. Lord, we need clothing. It's good. By the way, we should always take our needs to the Lord in prayer, shouldn't we? Absolutely. Positively, you should. With the knowledge God already knows. It's like the little kids coming in to tell moms and dads stuff. You already know it. You got your eye, you know. Moms, I know you. You got the eyes on the kids. And nothing usually escapes you. So when the kids come in and tell you something, it's kind of like, you already knew it. Well, there's nothing we tell the Lord that, is, that isn't part of his understanding already. This is really important. Because, see, oftentimes we focus on what we need more than we focus on the one who provides all our needs. See? Oh, Lord, this is what I need. In fact, my reason for praying right now is because of this need, Lord. Wow. I want us to say the reason I'm praying today, Lord, is because of you. Lord, I love you. I need you, Lord. See, that, that should be our motivation. That's what Jesus is getting to. When he says, when he says, seek first the kingdom, he's talking about seek first the king of the kingdom. That's really what he's saying. Because you're, you're looking at the kingdom and his righteousness. See that tag on there? That's not a tag on, by the way. When you seek the kingdom, who are you seeking? The king. King Jesus. That's who you're seeking. That is theologically accurate. Okay? So that changes prayer a lot, doesn't it? When you think about it. Because when I was praying for this, you know what happened to me today? I always get sidetracked. What's what I love about preaching? What, so this morning, um, I told Jen, I said, we got to leave at 9.30 because we have to drive over, you know, Santa Clarita. We've done it before. And so um, usually Sabbath morning, I'm up around 6, 6.30. You know, I'm happy. Got to look at my sermon. But this morning, I wake up at 7.30. And I'm going, oh, Lord, I'm late. And, and the Lord's going, what are you preaching about? Oh, I'm preaching about the kingdom, you know. Did the Lord know what I'm preaching about? <laughs> you know. He says, well, maybe you should practice what you're preaching, amen? Huh? Take it easy, man. This is not about you. Okay? This is about our Lord. That's why, we, that's why we're here. We want to hear about Jesus. Oh, yeah, and I want to tell you about him, too. That's why I'm here. So I'm making, the, I'm making this illustration now. I'm going to give you a little illustration here. But before I do, I want to make it clear. Here's my point. When Jesus is your highest priority, that's who you are seeking in your prayers. Because when you have Jesus, you have everything you need. You see what I'm saying? With Jesus, all things are possible. Without him, it ain't going to happen. Period. And we don't want it to happen. So the thing that is, the correction for us is, is to get off the thing you need and to get on the Jesus, uh, you know, focus. See? Because we burdened, and that's why I asked you, what are you worried about? Now, you know, we can worry about the fire and our work and relationships, and, and we should take all that to Jesus. We should do that. But we want to focus on the Lord. So, my little granddaughter, nine years old, we got 11 grandkids, amen? amen? No money, too many birthdays, and you know the school's doing this, y'all go to the Adventist school, the Adventist school's raising money, who are the first people they call? Grandma and Grandpa, especially Grandma, <laughs> you know? I try to negotiate a little bit, but Grandma's pretty smart now. It used to be, well, Grandma, will you uh, give us something, every page we read, or every book, or I forgot how they did it, and Grandma was saying, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And then they'd read, ten, they'd read like 10 books. You know how that is? I'll give you $5 for every book. Huh? That runs into money. So my nine-year-old granddaughter, who lives in Colorado, uh, we were there visiting, and um, 
we were holding hands because we're getting ready to go out the door to go somewhere. So we're holding hands, and then she tapped me on the side and said, Grandpa, yeah, will you take me to Disneyland? Now, of course, grandparents, you already know the answer to this one, right? All the grandparents here, they already know what the answer is. But So she said to me, Grandpa, will you take me to Disneyland? She was completely unconcerned about the details, the distance, you know, to get over there to Disneyland. Complete, that's irrelevant. She was completely um, unconcerned about the cost. You know how it is to go to Disneyland these days. Uh -huh. She was, she was unconcerned about parking or anything, food. You know, Grandpa, will you take me to Disneyland? Her smiling face and her little twinkling eyes looking at me said to me, you'll take care of all the details. You see, she gets about a dollar a week. So it's going to be a long time before she goes to Disneyland. <laughs> But by asking Grandpa, she knew intuitively I could take care of it. You know, I got the resources. I'm not a rich person, but, but you know when it comes to the grandkids, you got the resources. I got the resources. I have transportation. I have the food. I got everything. And yeah, we're going to go to Disneyland. See. And see, when we think about Jesus and what he's teaching us when he says seek first the kingdom he's teaching us to come to him first and he he will provide your greatest need you just take the Lord's hand and say Lord this is what I need and you look in faith and he will provide your need. You believe that? It's absolutely true. Now I know you now don't come up yet. Remember I'm gonna have a call. I know you want to get up here right now. But just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Because I got ten more minutes to wax eloquently. But before that, when I have the call to come up here, the call is Jesus, I want you to be my highest priority. I say it that way, my highest priority. We all have priorities during the day, don't we? Got to get to work. and Got to get something to eat. You know, got to do this. I'll be, you know, the highest priority we have is Jesus. He's our highest priority. That's what it means to seek the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be given to you. Is that what the Bible says? And it says, and all these things will be given to you as well. So it's putting our prayer priorities in perspective, and it's also correcting our life view of reality and what you worry about. Let me see how much time I've got. Okay, now here's my message to the young kids. You don't have to be a grandpa or grandma to understand this. Okay? You don't have to be a parent, college graduate, student in high school. You can be like little Catherine, you know? Gave that with mom and dad and grandpa teaching her and stuff and, and dad and mom and things. That you go to Jesus first. They kind of, kids kind of intuitively do that anyway. They don't see any resources within themselves. You notice that about kids? They don't have a bank account. They don't have a 401k. They don't even have a job. But you know what? They just go to the people who provide. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. You see what I mean? So this message is for them. Big time. And this message is for all people in all cultures. Jesus uh, was setting a new standard for us when he said that. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. He was setting a new standard for us to look at. 
The standard includes children. Remember when he said, let the children come to me and do not forbid them for of such belong the kingdom of heaven. Wow! There's a connection. So, in our churches, and in the church we were pastoring, now we're retired, you know that, but in our churches we did ask the kids to do lots of stuff like you're doing, which is great. And in reassuring the children that you don't have to be an adult to have Jesus in your heart gave them courage to do great things. I'm going to tell you a story about one of the kids, okay? This is what I'm building up to. Uh, this little boy was part of our congregation. Name has changed. Uh, but he was part of our congregation. Heard me preach and teach. And um, In our church, if the kids could do something like Catherine, they were up there. If they could sing a little bit, they were up here. Because they are the church too, amen? amen? And we wanted those kids to know this is their church and they owned it. And we were going to help them. And my big heart's desire, this is off the subject, was that I would get some pastors out of my congregation. Huh? That's what I was wanting. So I think I maybe have two coming up. More, only the Lord knows. But anyway, this little boy, um, I think he's about, he was about 10 years old when he, in this story, the boy I'm going to talk about. His name is Angel. So what happened was, Angel is a football player with Pop Horner. You know the Pop Horner football games and football teams, you know, all these little kids. Had. So he was all suited up and ready for practice. And all the boys were, you know, congregating and coming. The parents were bringing the boys on onto the field. And um, what they didn't see was that there was a little, little child who was motionless under the bleachers. He had fallen, and he laid there. And this is what happened now. This little boy had a brother who was on Angel's football team, and so the little boy wanted to see his brother practice Pop Warner football. So he gets up on the bleachers, on the top of the very top of the bleachers there. And um, so he's seated there. Now the parents are kind of down below congregating and talking. He's the only one up there. So without knowing it, the coach said to the team for warm-ups, he said to the team, and he couldn't see the little boy. He said, I want you to go up over to those bleachers, and I want you to run up and down the bleachers. You know, to exercise their legs and get stamina and so forth. So the kids one after another, began to walk, you know, run up the bleachers, um, single file, and then run back down. And as that happened, it was delightful to the little kid at first, because he was kind of, it's kind of vibrating, it's kind of fun, and, and the boys were coming closer to him, and uh, although really and truly, uh, the bleachers are pretty wide, so he's kind of in the corner, they're not really paying attention, you know, and they're running up and down, but that little vibration turned into more like an earthquake kind of a feeling until it jostled this little boy so much, the boy actually fell from the top all the way down. Bam. Nobody knew it happened. Nobody, nobody knew it happened. And so the boys just kept running and running and running until, uh, you know, the coach decided they'd, they'd done that enough and he blew the whistle, the boys came out. And they came and they began to assemble. Well, as they're assembling on the field there, one boy happens to notice and look over under the bleachers. And this is a God thing, because the little boy is so small. And he goes, look it. And he named the little boy, and he's under the bleachers. And... When that happened, the team members began to yell and scream, what do we do, what do we do? And they're yelling for the parents to come over. The parents were completely unaware this happened. And the boys were screaming, what do we do, what do we do? And the parents came running over. And 
Angel, the 10 year old boy in our church, he said to them, I know what to do. Let's pray. And so he actually holds out his hands like this and he's saying to the boys, you know, because, you know, boys aren't listening. Hey, I know what to do. I know what to do. Get over here. Get over here. You know, like this. We're going to pray. <clears throat> and he holds out his hands and here are the big boys, these boys from all over the place, all over LA. And they're making a circle like this for prayer. And Angel begins to say the prayer. His mom was so delighted and so amazed, she actually took a video, you know, video of, of him praying. And she prayed for the little boy. And he prayed. And he prayed that the little boy would be safe and, and be okay. Same kind of prayer we would pray. Well, the mom took him immediately uh, to first aid, to a nearby clinic. They didn't know what was going to happen. He ended his prayer, said amen, and then they waited. And it wasn't long until the mom came back with the little boy who had a big bump on his head, but the doctor said he was perfectly fine. Was that an answer to prayer? I think so. I think that was an answer to prayer by a 10-year-old boy suited up in football uniform, holding his hands out to other boys, and what an example the kid is setting. But see, to him, he wasn't about setting an example. This is who this little boy was. He used to sit on this side of the church, right about the, right the third of the church, right up here. And he paid attention. We have children like that in this church, amen? We want to be like that, amen? So today, we're going to have a little chance now to come up. And this is the call I was talking about. So now I'm going to come down here. <clears throat> and what you can do is if this message has resonated in your heart, I want you to, um, to come down, be with me. We're going to make a circle here. And we're going to pray. But the reason that you're coming is you're saying, Jesus, I want to make you my highest priority. Now, when you do it, it's a real deal, okay? Because that means you're not going to focus anymore on the needs. You're going to focus on the need giver. Say, Jesus, I want to focus on you now. Not only in my prayers, but in my life. Say, that's why you're coming down. And if there's anyone here who has not received Jesus as their Savior, come on down here. That'd be just great. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a prayer right now. And I'm going to kind of have like a benediction prayer. Because I know some of you may have other appointments or other needs. God bless you. It's okay. I realize that. I know that. You know, it's not about me. You love Jesus, but you may have to go. So, I'm going to have the prayer, and then I'll say amen. And then I'll be up here. If you feel like you want to make this commitment today, come on down and join me right here. And we'll have a prayer together. Is everybody okay with that? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Lord, you have everything in hand, the fire, uh, the political needs, the social unrest, the things that are on people's hearts today, our pastor, Chief Pastor Rother, his needs. Please bless and guide now. Go with each one today. We give our hearts to you, Jesus. We thank you that all things are possible with you. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. Now, this is the time to come down. So I invite you to come down and join me if you want to make that commitment today.
And we have plenty of room now. Let's let folks come into our circle. They're coming in over here and back here. We'll widen up our circle a little bit, coming down. We'll let the people come down the aisle. Come on down, folks. Let's go ahead and join hands together. Let people come into the circle. Come on in. Glad to have you. down. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We're making a commitment today to him. There's another brother coming right there. Let him into the circle. And Lord, we're gathered here now and we're so thankful, Lord, for your kindness and love to us. We're here, Lord, because of you, what you did on the cross for us. If you want to thank Jesus for what he did for you, say amen. amen. Lord, we're so grateful for you. With you is life, and without you, there's no life. There's no way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We're down here, Lord, because we want to commit our lives to you to be our highest priority in prayer and in life. If that's your decision today, just say amen. amen. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for what you're doing. All things are possible with you, Lord. Whatever worry we have, we give it to you. Whatever stress, we give it to you now. Because, Lord, we want to focus on you, the giver of all things. You're the one that answers. We thank you for it, Lord, and we love you for it. And now we want to sing a song together. Lee, I want to sing a Jesus Loves Me This I Know, because we know this song, and all the kids can sing it. So let's get to sing it together, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yeah. That was one more thing we're going to do today. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together in unison. We're going to say it. We're going to, I'm going to lead us, and we're going to say that together. Let's do that now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And God bless you all. And may you all go in peace. And just turn to the person on your right and say, God bless you, okay? Let's do that. God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.